Welcome to Soultron. This is the video review of the Dabon model IDW Optimus Prime. Here's how he scales with other Optimus Primes. And I think he's, he's definitely a hair smaller than the RID or G2 Optimus Prime and Armada. And he's about the same size as Leo Convoy, which I think is one of the smaller Primes. And here's a look at the box he comes in, very basic, and then on the front you get a cool animation of what he looks like, but there's really nothing interesting going on here. And then the instructions are also pretty basic. And this guy's so simple I actually didn't need the instructions at all, which is very nice. And here's a 360 view of this guy, and you can see he's very well designed. Everything is very, very clean. He has very minimal kibble and all the panels do double, double duty. There's really no pieces that don't have a function here. And I think this is just such a great rendition of that IDW Prime that for some reason Hasbro never gave us. I don't know why they just never made this figure. If we take a close look at the head here, the head here is pretty lacking. It does look mushy and it doesn't really look like the IDW design. It just looks more like a G1 Prime with some slightly elongated features. It's not quite right, and the eyes are very dead. It has light piping, but it's it's such dark plastic that the light piping just does not work at all. It's very pointless. So I think they really missed the head. It doesn't really capture the figure at all. But other than that, I think the design is really great. I, th I would have also liked for him to be a little bit taller, and the fists look a little bit knockoff-ish. But I think if he was just a little bit taller and it had a better head design, he would be pretty much perfect. So he does come with his ion blaster, which looks very good. You might have noticed that the screws are rusted out. So he just came that way, which kind of doesn't surprise me. But it's a very nice accessory, which fits him very well. And then as far as his articulation goes, he does have a ball joint neck, so with a lot of good expression. He does have 360 on the shoulders. He does have a full outward range on the shoulder. You just have to get it, his bicep into that area. Well, maybe it's not. Yeah, there you go. You get a full outward range on the shoulder. You can pivot these armor pieces so they're behind the shoulder, which gives him a slightly cleaner look. Um, I think the forearm armor is supposed to look like this, but the directions say like this. But this is the only time you use this joint, so I'm assuming it's supposed to look 3D like this. You could also pivot this forearm armor to be right in front of the fist, which also looks good. So I'm kind of torn on which way looks better, but this blocks the fist a little bit. He does not have wrist articulation. He just has like a little bit of mo motion for the transformation. He doesn't have a waist. Technically, you can kind of cheat a waist if you don't peg him in all the way. You can give him a waist where he can rotate, and he can also get an ab crunch, but it doesn't really look good, and it doesn't really add anything to him, so I prefer to just peg him in. You get a full forward kick here on a spring ratchet, and then a full backward kick. Maybe this is just a friction ratchet. And then he does have a full outward kick. And then he does have 90 degrees in the knee, a thigh swivel, and he does have ankle tilts. So he has all the modern articulation you could ask for, except for wrist articulation and a dedicated waist. But otherwise, yeah, his articulation is great. You can get some really good posing out of him without too much difficulty. So, yeah, he's pretty easy to pick up and pose. He doesn't work against you at all, so that's nice. So... Transformation is also very simple in this guy, which I appreciate. So you're just going to use the double hinge in his forearm armor, and you can that'll let you swivel in his fists, and then you're just going to close it up and put it in the back position. So as far back as this forearm armor will go, that's the default. And then you're going to rotate his bicep so that you have a notch that matches up with this shoulder. And then you rotate the shoulder armor. And that's going to come across here. And then you got pretty much the whole section for the cab. And then you just pull out his shoulders and get those ready. 
So those are ready to go. And then we're going to go ahead and open up his chest. And then you, he telescopes in two places. He telescopes at the waist here, and then he's also going to telescope at the, the chest. And then that will let you fold in this middle chest section, and then his whole head can just go inside of his chest at this point. Sort of. Okay, actually, I'm going to do that in a second. Wait. I think you need to actually move this section down first. So we're just going to go ahead and get his legs out of the way. And then this kind of has a diagonal slide to it. It's kind of awkward. But you can get this shoved all the way down as far as it'll go. It takes some force. And then there's a little tab here that will let you click the wheels into place. Um, some of the tolerances on this guy are a little bit scary. You have to click some things pretty hard. And then you can get, now that that's all out of the way, you can shove his head down pretty easily, I think. Yeah, maybe I have to rotate. Let's rotate his whole chest around first. Um, the, the transformation on this guy is a little strange. Like some things just don't line up the way you would expect. Yeah, I don't know what's fighting me on this. Okay, I was able to get his head all the way down. This gray piece is just going to kind of be back here. Um, that was a little bit more annoying than it had to be. And then you close up his chest again. And then you're just going to rotate this whole assembly around. And you can see that that's going to make up the front of his cab. You can rotate these sections. His spoiler is just going to clip up here. Also, it takes a little bit of force, which... It's kind of scary to put on these hinges. I don't really like doing that. And then you can get these panels ready. And then the legs, thankfully, are exceedingly simple. You're just going to fold up the toes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, the feet themselves are die cast. At least the toes are. I think the rest of this foot is also die cast. Yeah. Oh, I have to test it on my teeth, but yes. It all, his entire foot is die cast. And then you're going to sandwich those together on this tab. You're going to have these panels, which are going to clean everything up, of course. So get those panels in place. And then it's just a matter of getting everything where it needs to go. So you can collapse his chest back down. This is also on a pretty tight joint. You're going to rotate this panel up and then you can see everything's going to puzzle piece together very nicely right here and then you get this extra little bit which was kind of unnecessary but also cleans up the back of the cab so this is just some extra kibble that he probably could have just done without but it hides everything pretty nicely and then you can take the gun and these are going to friction right into that slot there you've got a tab right there which is in the back of his forms, it looks like. And then you just basically work on getting everything tabbed into place. Some of these tabs are a little bit too long, so it makes it a little hard to get them where they need to be. And this is the kind of plastic, this is not the flexing kind of plastic. This is actually hard, like old school plastic. So this guy doesn't like to flex at all. So you gotta be pretty careful about how you get everything in place, and there you go. Now that he's all nice and cleaned up, you get a pretty good vehicle mode. The cab is exceptionally long, but I think it's worth it for what you get. And everything does tab very nicely into place. He looks pretty excellent. He's a smaller vehicle for sure. He definitely would not be in scale with a deluxe size car. But yeah, I like this figure a lot. Um, he was $15 on AliExpress, which is such a great deal for this figure. Really well worth it. I highly recommend it. He is kind of a knockoff quality. He's kind of like a, I would say like a seven for quality. I'm not really worried about anything breaking. He, he handles pretty well. So uh, decent quality, definitely not a 10 out of 10 or anything, but you get what you, what you pay for. And this guy is just 
really worth it. Uh, I haven't seen anyone review him, so I just wanted to show this off. I'll leave a link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one.